Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I feel like is very long overdue. Um, I don't know where this year has gone, I don't know how we are already in September as I'm filming this, but we are. Um, so I wanted to bring you a, an update on my low buy that I was doing for the year of 2022. Now, if you didn't catch my video discussing the rules of the low buy, the things I wanted to achieve from it, um, then you can watch that, I'll link it down below. But basically a summary of that video is I wanted to buy just one new item of clothing each month. Um, and also I wanted to spend no more than 200 pounds a month on that item of clothing. Now there were a few caveats to this, like I could thrift as well. So if I wanted to buy one new piece of clothing, but thrift two additional ones in a month, that was fine. As long as the total amount I spent for that month didn't go over the 200 pounds. So that was basically a summary of the rules. And I did some updates in January and February with how I was getting on with the low buy, but I haven't updated you since then. And I know a few of you have been asking how it's been going. They've seen me buying like maybe more things than than they would think I could buy with my low buy. And yes, I have broken my rules a few times. So I wanted to talk to you about that today and kind of go over all of the purchases I've made, how much I've spent in total, the months that I stuck to my low buy and the months that I didn't and kind of explaining my reasoning and my thought process and how I feel like it's going so far. Cause we are sort of three quarters of the way through the year now. So I'm gonna go month by month and tell you what I bought, how much I spent and whether I still like those items, whether I still wear them or whether I regret any of the purchases that I did make. Okay, so January, I did make an update in January. So if you watch that, you already know this, but my January purchase was my Laleen striped cotton jumper. I got this one off Netta Porter. I thought long and hard about it. I kind of made the purchase about mid to late January. So I spent a few weeks sitting on the decision. It was my first uh, purchase of the low buy. I wanted to get it right. I didn't want to break the rules in the first month. And so I went with this jumper in the end. It was about 113 pounds. So I did, I think I got it on sale. I think I, think I might've even got it like half price. I'm trying to remember, I can't remember, but I know it was 113 pounds because I went back and looked on my Net-a-Porter account. So it was well under my 200 pound a month budget and I did just buy one item in January. So I completely stuck to my rules for the first month, which is always good when you're starting a new challenge. Um, how do I feel about that jumper now? Well, I haven't actually worn it in probably about five months because it's been in storage up in my loft um, along with some of my heavier knitwear because it is a pretty thick, heavy cotton jumper. So it's not something that you can wear in the spring and summer season. I am really excited to get it back out saying that it's September now. I think I'm probably gonna wait until around late September, beginning of October before I get it out, just because it is really a heavy jumper that you would wear only when it starts to get pretty cool. So I, I'm definitely looking forward to getting it out and I don't regret it as a purchase. I think the quality is really good. It's held up really well. I wore it a lot in sort of January, February and March before I put it away. And I think the price point 113 pounds for a good quality jumper from a relatively small independent brand was a great purchase. So I'm definitely happy with my January purchase. Moving into February. February, I made two purchases um, and I made them right at the beginning of the month. So I went down to London um, and I did some shopping while I was there and I bought two things from And Other Stories. One was another jumper. It was another wintery jumper. It was a roll neck cashmere. I think it was a cashmere blend from And Other Stories. I'll put a picture of it on screen. I'll put pictures of all the stuff that I'm mentioning on screen. Um, that one was 135 pounds. So relatively expensive. It was a bit of an impulse buy. I was in London. I was on like Oxford Street, Regent Street, and I just wanted to buy something you know when you just feel like I just want to buy something which is probably not the healthiest thing but that's how I felt and so I made this purchase now I definitely don't regret it it's a lovely jumper I, it's the only roll neck jumper I have I think it's very cozy it's quite oversized it's perfect for like those chilly autumn winter days again it's up in storage at the moment so I'm looking forward to getting it back out of storage when the time comes um, but yeah it was a good purchase it probably wasn't as thought out as the Laleen jumper where I literally sat for like two weeks and thought about it this one was like I went into the store I saw it I bought it but I still don't regret it I also bought one other thing while I was in and other stories I bought a belt this was just a leather belt that I felt like I needed I felt like I was missing there were a couple of dresses I had um, that I wanted this specific belt for it was 35 pounds so I came under the 200 pounds um, but I did buy two things so a slight kind of break of the rules but I wasn't too mad at myself for doing that because it was it wasn't overboard it was still within budget Moving into March, I actually didn't buy anything in March. So March was a weird month with things going on in the world, with kind of changing from it being really cold to being slightly warmer, but still not warm enough for like spring weather. So I didn't want to spend any more money on really thick wintry jumpers because I wasn't in that mindset anymore. I was looking forward to spring. 
but equally like the spring collections and stuff were only really just starting to come out and I, I didn't want to quite make those purchases yet so I actually didn't buy anything which was nice it was a no by month unintentionally but yeah no by month which was nice following on from February where I did buy two things And then we move into April. Now, April, I feel like, was where it started to get a little bit rocky. Um, I actually ended up buying three things in April. And I did talk about this in a video, actually. Um, I bought, the main thing I bought was my Bembian woven leather bag. Now, this bag has probably become one of my most worn items in uh, my wardrobe. Um, I have a couple of bags that I'm absolutely loving and this is one of them. This is the one I wear for more casual days, for like chilled days, beach days, you know, whenever I want that casual kind of straw bag feel, but the leather variety. So this one I bought, it was £218, so it was above my budget limit. I kind of justified this because I hadn't bought anything in March. So I didn't feel too guilty about it being slightly over and I'd rather spend 218 pounds, so like 10% over my budget um, on something that I really loved than buy something that was 199 pounds that I didn't love as much. So that was my justification for it. Whether that was right or wrong, I don't know, but I have to say it's one of my favorite purchases of the year. So while we're talking about some of the best items in my wardrobe this year, I wanted to catch you up about the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is kindly sponsored by the people at Teddy Blake. And Teddy Blake, if you haven't heard of them, if you didn't see my video with them a couple of months ago, they're a luxury handbag company and they want to democratize the luxury handbag industry and bring affordable but high quality handbags to all. They use the best, most premium Italian leather and they are handcrafted in Italy as well. So you are really getting that luxury handbag experience, but at a much more affordable price point. Speaking of my bag, um, they sent me this a couple of months ago and I am still just as much in love with it as I was back then. This has become my go-to work bag primarily because it is a more structured, formal looking bag. I feel like it suits that portion of my wardrobe perfectly. So I reach for this about two to three times a week when I'm going out and about for meetings and things like that. And I just think it's the perfect size for that. I don't have to carry a laptop around with me usually. Um, sometimes I will put an iPad in here and that fits perfectly. Sometimes it would just be like a notepad, um, wallet, keys, that kind of thing. But it's the right kind of size for work. I love that it is very structured. It brings that more corporate formal feel, but it still goes nicely with my weekend wardrobe when I do want to wear it at the weekend as well. I love the color as well. I think green is a neutral in my mind. So it goes with everything that I own and it transitions perfectly from the spring summertime moving into like autumn winter time. I feel like I'm going to be reaching for this perhaps even more because it does lend itself with the color so well to that season also. In terms of how it's held up, in terms of the quality, there are no scratches on this bag. There is no sign of wear other than the leather kind of soft ever so slightly obviously it's a very structured bag so it's not going to soften too much but it just feels a little bit more kind of worn and used without actually displaying any physical signs of wear so I love the quality I definitely vouch for the quality particularly for the amazing price point that they are at finally I just want to tell you a little bit about their labor day sale so they are currently running a sale with discounts of up to 70% off some of their bags so if you did want to make a bag purchase if you were looking to do that perhaps for autumn winter perhaps for your workwear wardrobe or just perhaps for an evening um, or weekend bag, then now might be a good time to do it. Have a look at the link down below that will take you to their website and you can browse what's on offer in their Labor Day sale. It will run until the 7th of September. So make sure if you did want to make a purchase, you do it before that time. Thanks again to Teddy Blake for sponsoring this video. Now back to the low buy update. I then went on to make two more purchases in April. So as I said, it got a little bit rocky here. So I bought two pairs of trousers from m and I bought a pair of linen striped trousers for 22 pounds, so fairly inexpensive. And I bought, bought a pair of like cotton denim look wide leg trousers also from M&S for about £35. So they were fairly inexpensive items. They weren't like big ticket items, but obviously I'd already spent more than my £200 allocated budget for that month. So to go and then spend another sort of what, 50 something pounds on those wasn't great. In terms of those items, the linen trousers actually really disappointed me. They, the like hem at the bottom came undone after just a couple of wears. I felt like they just looked really worn after a few washes. They shrank a little bit as well, which is probably my fault, but I, I do wash everything on 30, so I'm not sure. Um, 
And I just, I think you get what you pay for. They were 22 pounds. I can't expect the world from them. So while I loved wearing them for, I would say like a month, after that they got pretty raggedy and now I only tend to wear them around the house, which is a real shame. And I think it teaches me that the, the aim of my low buy and the kind of what I was trying to do is really beneficial buying one item a month that is higher quality and is going to last like the Benby and bag, like the jumpers I bought in January and February, things that don't just fall apart after a few washes, things that you take care of is the way to go. Whereas a £22 pair of trousers, it's never going to last for years and years. Um, you obviously have those fluke items that do. I've got pair, like things I bought from fast fashion stores that were like under £20 that have lasted for years. But generally, especially I think with a pair of light colored trousers, it's probably not gonna happen. So those were those trousers. The other pair of trousers I do still wear regularly and I do still really like. Those were slightly more expensive. I think they were slightly higher quality. And so I think those were a good purchase overall. I, yeah, I still wear them on a weekly basis. So May was quite a similar month to April. I ended up buying three things in May as well. So again, breaking my budget. Actually, I bought four things, but one was thrifted. So we'll start with the thrifted thing. That was my Reformation Feelings jumper. So I got this on Vinted. So this was fine. This wasn't counted as a new item of clothing. So I can thrift as many things as I want within my budget. Um, that was £40. And that was actually a really good deal. It was a wool, 100% wool jumper from Reformation for £40. Basically never been worn. Um, I haven't worn it loads because obviously it's a wool jumper. I did wear it. I do wear it on like cooler summer days, but I don't wear it every day but I think I will wear it a lot in autumn winter again and that one has stayed in my wardrobe rather than being put upstairs because it's a bit lighter than the other jumpers I've bought so that was a good purchase the other things I bought were all from and other stories I bought a pair of shoes for a wedding I was going to this was kind of like a non-negotiable because I didn't have a pair of heels to wear to a wedding and I was going to a wedding um, and I just thought I, I kind of need shoes. Um, I didn't have to spend this much. I could have got a pair of second hand. I could have got a cheaper pair. Decided not to do that. I got a pair from And Other Stories, a gold strappy pair of sandals that I thought would be quite good for any occasions I have coming up in the next few years like weddings or etc. Um, those were £85. They were quite expensive for what they were and I think looking back I wish, I, I wish I'd had the budget to spend like £150 on a pair from a more high quality brand because I think although they're nice, they're not the most comfortable. I did wear them until sort of 1am at the wedding, so they were fine, they didn't hurt that much, but I think I could have got a more sturdy pair from a higher quality brand if I'd had the budget to spend like twice as much on them. But the reality was I didn't. The reality was I, I did, wasn't in a position and not really in a position to be spending sort of 150, 200 pounds on a pair of sandals that I might only wear twice a year. So I bought the And Other Stories ones. Don't necessarily regret them, but I don't necessarily recommend them. I think they're on sale at the moment actually, so maybe I do. They're not a bad pair of shoes, but I just feel like they could be a little bit more sturdy and a little bit more comfortable. The other two things I bought were blouses from Another Stories and I've absolutely loved both of these. I've worn them loads. The first one was this like puff sleeve blue one um, with the collar. Love this one. I wear this again on a weekly basis. I really like it. It was £55. I think it was a good buy. And the second one was this white one. Again, I really like this as well. I wear this probably about twice a week, once or twice a week with a pair of linen trousers or jeans. Um, and I think it's just a nice basic top to have for summer. So both good purchases, both I don't regret, but I was technically breaking my low buy rules. And then we get to June and June is where it just, it plummeted. I, my resolve had obviously just gone. It was fully summer and I just felt like I didn't have any summer clothes. So I bought a lot of stuff in June and I spent a lot of money. Um, and so this is definitely, yeah, this was I just the low buy, the idea of the low buy just went out the window. I thought, I, I just have hardly any summer clothes. A lot of my summer dresses from the previous year, I'd ended up selling because I just didn't love them anymore, which is something I need to think about. Why am I not loving dresses I bought just a year ago? I should still like them, right? But the reality was I wasn't. So I ended up making one, two, three, four, five, six purchases in June and six expensive purchases in June as well. So let's go through them. The first two things I bought were also for the wedding that I went to and also for just having a dress and a bag and a pair of shoes that I could wear to occasions like weddings, birthdays, christenings, I don't know. I'm not going to any christenings, but um, that kind of thing. So I just didn't have that in my wardrobe. So I bought the Reformation Sigmund dress 
which I love. Um, I think it's beautiful. I think I will wear this in the future. It's timeless. You can wear it to a winter wedding. You can wear it to a summer wedding. So pleased with that purchase, but it was expensive. It was £248. I also bought a coach bag. This was an impulse buy. I didn't have to spend this much on a bag. I'd already bought the Benbian bag. I'd been gifted the Teddy Blake bag. I didn't need to do this. It was a bit of a silly purchase. I have to say, I love the bag and I still wear it loads. Um, I love the fact that you can, actually I've got it here. I love the fact that it's like a crossbody bag that you can wear in the day. I wore this loads when I went to Paris. This was my Paris bag um, when I went to Paris in June. But you can also take the strap off and it is the perfect clutch bag for like evening events because it's white, it goes with everything. It's a nice size, you can comfortably fit a few things in it. And it's, I just really like the style of it. Um, and it just looks perfect as a little clutch for a wedding or even just for an evening meal out. It's very summery, but equally it would look good in the winter as well. I just, I really love this bag. And as expensive as it was, it was 235 pounds. I also kind of don't regret it because it's one of those timeless pieces that is just, I went for a very classic style. Um, I know Coach is having a bit of a moment at the moment, but you know, this is gonna look good forever. Um, a classic color that I don't have any bags in. I have black bags, brown bags, green bags, don't have any white bags, um, and a good size and versatile with the, um, the strap or no strap. So I'm trying to justify it, but I do really love it. And I would definitely recommend it as a bag. I think it's great. I think the quality is really good. I actually really like Coach for kind of a mid-range um, brand you know some of their bags are really high quality but actually for a designer level bag really quite affordable so there was that so it was the dress and the bag for the wedding along with the shoes that I bought in May so that was done for kind of occasions hopefully for the next couple of years but then I went a bit mad on summer dresses and sandals I bought a pair of sandals from Cezanne um, I can't remember what they're called but they're a flat brown leather pair of sandals now these I've worn loads I really like them I like the look of them um so they're a good purchase I will say they're not the most comfortable they're not a pair of sandals I can wear for more than like a couple of miles I would say I can do about 8,000 steps in them and then they start to get a little bit uncomfortable they're very flat so there's absolutely no like arch support they're literally just a flat piece of leather which is fine but if you start to walk a lot they do start to get a little bit uncomfortable so would I have bought those? Probably not. I'd probably have gone with something with a little bit more support, something that has the same kind of style, a brown leather sandal is what I wanted. But yeah, something maybe a little bit more comfortable. But there you go, I've got those and I will still continue to wear them for summers to come. They're really good quality. They've lasted really well. I also bought a jumper from Cezanne. I bought the Greta jumper, that white jumper I was wearing in my last video. Um, that one was £100. It's a cotton jumper. It's really beautiful. I love the back detail on it. It's a little bit unique. It's a little bit different. It's perfect for a light summer jumper, a spring summer jumper. <sighs> Would I buy that now? Probably not. No particular reason. The quality's good. The style I like. I will continue to wear it. I wear it weekly. But I'm not as in love with it as I was when I first bought it. So no particular reason. It's a nice jumper. I just probably didn't need it. I probably didn't need it. It was just a want. And now it gets regular wear, it's nice, but it's not my favorite piece. It's not, I don't feel the same way as I do even about this Leontine or about um, even like the And Other Stories blouses that I wear so much and I love. I don't feel as excited about the Cezanne Greta jumper. So that was another purchase in June. And then I bought two dresses. Two dresses or three dresses? Two dresses. Two dresses. I bought the white Aura dress. Um, the Broderie on Glaze one. I do really like this dress. This one was £150. I wore this in Paris. Um, I've worn it a few other times this summer. I love it. It's quite hard to care for because it's white. I've got a few marks on it and things like that. So not the most practical dress, but I do really like it. It's nice to just chuck on because it's not form fitting. It's not, you know, it's really loose and comfortable. Um, so it's a nice dress. And I also bought the Thallis dress, which is the denim dress. This one I've worn more. I really like this one, even though it is a little bit more form fitting, a little bit more structured. I just, I don't know, I just feel really good in it. Um, it's one of those pieces of clothing that if I'm not sure what to wear, I will put on the Suzanne Thallis dress. So that was a good purchase. That was 145 pounds. So those were all the things I bought in June. So as you can see, six items of clothing and I'll put the total amount for all of those six items on screen because I haven't done the maths but yeah it's a lot of money and obviously way surpasses my 200 pound a month budget so what did I do after that I decided I'm going to go on a no buy I'm going to go on a three month no buy I've spent I bought three times as much really as I should have um 
or spent three times as probably more than three times as much but roughly that much um I want to go on kind of a self-enforced no buy for at least two months, probably three, to reevaluate. You know, I felt like my summer wardrobe by that point was well stocked. I had those dresses, I had the sandals, I had the occasion wear, I had a light summer jumper. There wasn't anything really. I had those trousers that I bought from MS. There wasn't really anything that I was desperately in need of. I was like, I'm gonna go on a no buy. I'm not gonna think about shopping. I'm gonna enjoy my summer. I'm gonna do like travel and bits and bobs as well. Um, and then come autumn, winter, I will probably revert back to the rules of the original low buy. And that is basically what I've been doing and why I haven't made that many videos. I didn't buy anything in July and I didn't buy anything in August. We're now at the beginning of September and I'm planning not to buy anything until October. At that point, I will probably go back to my original rules and buy one item a month for the last three months of the year. So, it's a mixed bag. It's definitely been a learning curve. I will say I'm quite pleased with how I've done overall. Obviously, June was, you know, complete disaster really but I've kind of made up for it in March where I didn't buy anything in July and August and September where I'm not going to buy anything so you know I think you you can't always expect these things to be linear you can't always expect it to be as simple as right I'm going to buy one item a month 200 pound a month and that's it there's going to be some months where you don't feel like shopping at all there's going to be some months where you want to buy loads and that's what I've experienced and I think maybe for next year for 2023 I would consider doing something like a seasonal budget rather than a monthly budget because I think seasons are easier to think about you might want to buy four items for a season but you might not want to buy them in separate months you want to you might want to buy them all at the beginning of the season enjoy that season and then when it comes to the next one think about what what four items you want to buy for then so i think that's probably what i'll do in 2023 but obviously i'll keep you updated i just think the monthly format isn't the best it isn't the easiest it isn't the most practical for a lifestyle um but yeah i'd, I'd, I'd be looking to kind of tweak the rule slightly for next year Roughly to spend about the same amount of money, but but just do it perhaps seasonally or every three months or even every six months, something like that. So let me know if you've got any recommendations. Let me know um, how your low buy is going. Because I know when I posted my original video, a lot of you were also going to play along and do a low buy as well. Let me know how that's going. Have you broken your rules? Have you stuck to your rules? I know some of you have stuck to them 100%, which I think is amazing. Like hats off to you. I think that takes a lot of willpower, takes a lot of um, planning as well. So yeah would love to know your experiences of the low buy how it's gone um, how your shopping has been in 2022 and how you want to move forward with it as well because i'm always eager to hear from you and in your experiences as well let me know if you enjoyed this video as well down below like it if you did subscribe to my channel all those good things check out teddy blake in the link below um, if you would like to and i'll see you all very soon in my next video